With your help, we can continue to fight for freedom. This is not possible without your generosity. Join our quest for the truth and our freedom. Simply visit www.realitycheck.radio forward slash donate to make a difference today. Now it's time for Cam's Buddies. This week we'll find out what they think about the rollout of facial recognition in foodstuffs pack and save stores and how Countdown Woolworths have added facial recognition conditions to the terms and conditions of their new card. My producer has them all lined up and ready to go. Let's go now to Cam's Buddies. Welcome to Cam's Buddies, Lindley. You were a star last week. You ha- we had so much feedback about how great you were, so it's great to have you back on the show. Oh, well, thanks very much. I'm not used to being regarded as great, but I'll take that. <laughs> you, well, you should take it, you know, because the feedback in the mailbag was that you were an absolute star and uh, and a voice of reason. And, uh, you know, I, I just love have, you know, having that little chat with you. And so we're chatting again this week. So this week, I thought we'd throw a bit of a curveball. Um, you would have possibly seen the news that uh, Foodstuffs, which controls New World and Pack and Save and Foursquare, are rolling out a trial of facial recognition in about 12 uh, locations. And then also uh, Countdown, which is renamed to Woolworths, have just uh, launched their replacement to the one card, the the new orange card that you've got. And in the terms and conditions that no one ever reads, it says in there that um, they can track your vehicle in the car park and they can match it to your card and uh, and possibly do facial recognition as well. What are your thoughts on that? Well, uh, I am pretty stunned to be fair, but I, I must uh, put in a disclosure here. I don't shop at uh, Countdown. I find it a very disagreeable place in general. Yep. Um, but I'm really worried about their mice, Cam. <laughs> I mean, I've got down a bit of a here, mouse you problem, prob- haven't they? Well, you've probably read that we've uh, got a very special mouse down here in Christchurch at like Countdown. Salad. Yes, and he's been facially recognised now as a thief of potato and coomera salad. <laughs> and I'm really quite worried about him because, you know, with animal rights and everything, I think, well... All mice look the same. <clears throat> so, you know, will they be targeted unfairly? That's my worry. Well, it could be, um, you can't really say racially profiled, mousily profiled no. maybe. But, I mean, what if they get a, a rat in there? Um, could the rat be mistaken as a mouse or could a mouse be mistaken as a rat? Well, they could be. A- they could be. And, of course, if they're stealing, they are rats, aren't they? Rat bags. <laughs> <laughs> rat, rat bags. Well, bags. Well, you have to provide your own bags now at Countdown. So oh, you may, do too. <laughs> may, maybe it's not a rat bag. <laughs> oh, you shouldn't get me going. You know, <laughs> I have done a lot of caricatures in my past, and uh, this just winds me up. You know, I can see all sorts of visions. I can see rats pushing trolleys out the door and everything now. So we better get back to the serious side of it. Well, I remember when my grandfather. Um, had leukemia and he was in the hospital and I'd go up to visit him and he'd say, shh, shh, Cam, they're in the corner. And I'd say, oh, what, Grandpa, what's in the corner? He says, they're rats. They're rats and yeah. they've got, they've got uh, green singlets and red underpants on. Oh, dear. <laughs> That's a worry. Well, those are good drugs if you ask me. <laughs> <laughs> yes, could have seen worse, couldn't he? Yeah, but that's the thing, isn't it? These the reason why these stores are looking at uh, facial recognition is because there are rats or vermin that are stealing from the shop, and they and they're at their wits' end because it doesn't seem that the police seem that interested in accosting these thieves, these rats that are stealing from the store, mm. and the the store can't stop them; they can't physically stop them. So they they need to have some sort of system in place to try and identify them before they get in the store to steal a trolley's worth of groceries. Yes, but I do fear that there'll be violence at that moment anyway, but I'll just relay a little thing, experience I had um, several years ago. 
I had an overnight stay in Papakura, which I had done on quite a few occasions um, in line with the Karaka um, thoroughbred yearling sales. Yep. And I was absolutely shocked beyond belief. I wandered down to Countdown, as I usually did, and was confronted by a bunch of hoodies lying sprawled all around the floor in the entranceway. Yeah, yeah. And you, you, you had to step over their legs to get in. And there was a huge security guard standing at the door, something I've never seen ever in my life. You know, I'm a quiet South Islander. No, this is and, normal in Auckland. But I'd never seen it. To, to even see a security guard was, like, horrifying to me. And I actually, well, you know, as a woman on their own, I feared for my life in that scene, and I took to my scrapers and good choice because about six months later, a security guard at that very supermarket was killed. mm one of one of the thugs that hang around the doorway ran at him and King hit him and he collapsed and died on the spot. So yeah. that's that would probably be oh, I don't know, between five and eight years ago. Yeah. Now no supermarket should have to put up with that. Well, you know, but, in Auckland, uh, security guards are routine at every supermarket. You know, I go to the countdown they, here in Takapuna. And they have a permanent security guard there at the at the entrance, and uh, that that's that's just normal in Auckland to see security guards. And you know, I was I was shopping there the other day, and I saw someone go into the um, with their trolley into the self checkout area. And uh, what they do is they sort of pretend that they're going to scan uh, the mm. the stuff, and then they scan it all, stick it back in the trolley, and then bolt out the door. And uh, that's, that's apparently quite common. Uh, and what happens then is the, the supermarket uh, staff have to then go to that terminal and cancel each item out individually, and it takes time to do all of that. So it's a real problem in Auckland. Uh, I don't know what it's like in the rest of the country, but uh, certainly there's uh, large numbers of people that are entering these supermarkets stealing whole trolleyfuls of, of – um, we're not just putting talking about a ham down the – down the pants here. We're talking about a whole trolley, and they just push the whole trolley out and load it into the car and drive off. Yes. Well, of course, they've learned to do it. They can get away with it, and um, so so they do do it. Um, like I shopped at Pack and Save today, mm. which is an offshoot, offshoot of New World, uh, so my experience is completely different to yours. No security guards, lovely, friendly staff, nice, open, friendly shop. Um, and superb service, lovely customers. You know, just we just don't see any of that. So how fortunate are we? But, you know, I don't really rate it as supermarket crime at all. I think it's about all crime. Mm. I think it's about broken down family structure. It's about uneducated, unemployed youth. Mm -hmm. It's about... They're often unsociable, thieving role models. Yep. It's about victim identity, which breeds entitlement. Mm -hmm. It's about acceptance of crime, lack of police and judicial commitment. It's about the pathetic dumbing down of the law. It's about society's overall drop in standards. And I quote, Thou shalt not steal. Yeah. And that does not have any, that has no clauses or sub-clauses. No principles. Or anything of the sort. And we've come so far away from that that this is the result. Because they don't only steal at the supermarkets, they walk straight into people's homes and well, steal. Even well, when even, even when MPs the owner's in it. the home. Even MPs do it. MPs they go, do it. Yeah, and, and everyone goes, oh, well, you know, poor... Poor goal res, you know, we have to understand that she's under pressure. Oh, there, there. We should be saying this is unacceptable. It's unacceptable for an MP. It's unacceptable for a general citizen to thieve out of stores. There's a reason why there's a crime. And, you know, we need to have our police to start to do the little things like stopping shoplifting, like, you know, going and looking at buildings that have got a broken window or something like that. Because if you look after the little things, the big things get taken care of by themselves.
Well, that's right, and you know how that worked with Rudy Giuliani in New, in New York. Very successful. I mean, he started off, everyone said he couldn't do it. He was mad and it was uh, impossible. Um, and he just organised um, a fleet of buses and, and staff. And people even got uh, chucked in the bus and taken off and locked up for jaywalking, um, being a bit menacing, um, graffiti, anything of that sort. They were bundled up and locked up. Yeah, and well... it wasn't long at all that um, the crime started to drop and that just had a sort of ongoing effect. Of course, now it's the opposite, but it proved that that works. If you stamp out the uh, first little nibble of crime, the rest follows. We have no standards at all, really, now. Well, not not compared There's to no what consequences. I knew. There's know? no real consequences for committing these crimes, isn't no. it? And, and when, by the time they actually do get nabbed, um, they're up before the beak. They get a, a slap on the wrist with a well-soaked bus ticket, uh, if they can mm -hmm. find a bus ticket these days. But usually, if they can't find a bus ticket, I'm sure there's a, a, a spare tissue round that they can soak in the liberal tears, a uh, jug of liberal tears they have on the judge's bench and give them a, a yeah. right good toweling with the wet tissue and uh, and there's no consequences. Well, of course, it's not, you know, it's just like from my breadth of time on the, on the earth, I have seen such a change, um, you know, in if. When I was a child, you know, if I did anything like that, the local policeman would have got me by the scruff of the neck, taken me down to the police station and given me a thick ear. Well, my, and, co my um, cousin was yeah. a, a police officer in a small uh, town uh, south of Auckland. And, uh, you know, um, he was known as a bit of a hard man. And uh, he used to go down to the pub on a Friday, find out who, who he was after, point to them and say, outside, <laughs> give them a clip. And tell them to uh, you know get round and take that stuff back. Otherwise, there's going to be uh, harsher consequences than that. Well, that's right. But you see, things have changed so much, and because the other thing they did was drag them home to the parents, you know, um, which was sort of the pinnacle of all shame. But a lot of these um, younger criminals, they actually haven't got any parents as such. No. They seem to be just running wild between family members and camping here and camping there. It's just a total breakdown. Yeah. So There's a lot of know, hard work that's got to go in, isn't there, to, to solve this problem. And, and I'm not sure that facial recognition and cameras is going to do it. It won't do it at all because all that will happen is um, the poor staff member that's got to confront those people and say, Oi, you're out. Um, there's a moment there of confrontation and sooner or later um, somebody will do something violent in that situation. Yeah. And, of course, they've got away with um, taking these trolleys out to their cars. So they're going to be very aggressive when uh, they find they can't do it or they're confronted for it. They've got yeah. away with it, you know. Yeah. I mean, I feel sorry for the staff who work at the supermarket you know, I was down at, uh, again, down at Takapuna Countdown or Woolworths as it is now um, the other day and someone was, you know, screaming at one of the staff members and um, they were just sitting there and taking it. Well, I don't have to take that. So I said to them, you know, take your attitude outside. Oh, we don't need this. And they said, well, who are you? And I said, well, I'm someone who's quite prepared to get involved. So be my guest. Well, they decided that discretion was a better part of valour and slipped Alf out the door. But, um, oh, you know, I just well. felt sorry for the staff, and she's a lovely lady there. She's always humming and singing as she, as she does her work. Mm. She's a real delight. Yeah. And, you know, I go there and um, and I'm thinking, you know, to myself, shall I go through the self-checkout or shall I go and be pleasant to this lady and make her day? And that's what I do, even if it means I have to stand three or four people in the line to to go through so I can just ask her how her day's going and, and enjoy it. And they just don't get that, and I feel sorry for them. Well, they're brilliant people, and a couple of years ago when <clears throat> I had a tragedy to, to face, mm. um, it was just so uplifting for me to go into places like that, and the staff were just so nice. Um, you know, they say, hi, how are you, and how's your day, and everything, and it just is uplifting to the customers. Um, it's just rather a shame that it's 
dropping away. I mean, they must be really nervous. But I suppose it will fuel um, click and collect anyway. I mean, we don't have to go to the supermarket to be abused, do we, I suppose? No, I don't do right. click and collect but because I like going there. And I, like you, I like to um, meet up with the staff. They, they are lovely. Well, they are down here anyway. Oh, look, they are lovely and, and they do a really hard job and they don't get paid nearly enough. So, you know, I hope this uh, works out for them, but I suspect you're right and there'll be a bit of violence and um, that'll be um, sad, but we'll see what happens. Hey, Lindley, uh, I've got mm. to go to to Paul. He's uh, on the line next. He's waiting in the queue. So thank you so much for your contribution Excellent. and we'll talk again next week, eh? Thanks, Cam. That's fun. Okay, Take care. Lindley, thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Welcome to Cam's Buddies, Paul. Good to have you on the line again this week. Hi, how are you? Oh, box of birds. Fantastic. I thought today's topic uh, is one that uh, I've seen hitting the news and just been talking to Lindley about that. Um, you might be aware that foodstuffs, which is New World, Pack and Save and Foursquare, are rolling out a trial of facial recognition cameras. And then also Countdown, which is renamed as Woolworths, have just rolled out their new uh, you know, loyalty card. And in the terms and conditions from that, they, they say that they can track where your car's parked in the car park and link it to your card. And if they roll out facial recognition, they'll be able to do that and link that to your card as well. What are your thoughts on those? Oh, that's interesting. Um, I'm a bit anti the state um, having recognition, and I know it's not state, it's the supermarkets, mm. but once it's the thinning of the wedge, um, when they're saying that um, gay people just wanted to be able to be getting married, that was a thin end of the wedge. Now, now everything has gone kind of. I don't have a problem with gay people getting married, to be fair, but it's gone crazy in all sorts of rote behaviour. And I think facial recognition software in a supermarket. What for? Now, I guess um, under the Labor government, I think burglaries in supermarkets, I heard some while back, had doubled. And um, you see pictures of um, security guards at supermarkets getting assaulted while people are trying to walk out with trolley loads and bag loads of groceries. So my understanding is if there's 200 thefts at a supermarket in a week, there's a good chance it's done by 10 to 15 people. Yeah. And so there's the, the same people are doing this, the thieving. So to know that you've got someone in your supermarket that is a thief from facial recognition software, I could see how that could be handy. But what I don't think is handy is all the rest of us getting facially recognised. And it moves on from there to, um, I see there's places around the world that um, have facial recognition software so you can pay with your face. So you don't have to have your phone if you want to go and buy food, I think is a particular one. And so you, so you, they've got facial recognition software with you and you walk in and you just pay with your face. Um, as far as the recognition is concerned. Now, my thoughts on that are, that's, that's scary stuff, because when we had the um, the podium of truth, and then we had, oh, yes, it's all right for you to go to the supermarket, um, but you weren't allowed to go to hairdressers and you weren't allowed to go to um, your Cafes gym. Cafes and all restaurants of, and all that sort of stuff, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so we were all locked down, and we were locked down because of a government decree if they then take over these facial recognition things that the supermarkets put in place because they say with a court order, no, we want to have access to that too now, and then they decide to bring in your 15-minute city and say, oh, well, you shouldn't be at the supermarket. You're 20 minutes from home by car, not 15 by foot. And all these sorts of things, I think it's the thinning of the wedge as far as, um, like, if they had more burly staff challenging people that steal, that's probably a a reasonable way of doing it where you're not having to impinge on all other customers' rights. And now I hear also said that if you've got nothing to hide, you've got nothing to fear, but I think that's bollocks. You've only got nothing to hide because we're citizens that are peace-loving and mm. um, we're good citizens until they change the rules on us and make draconian stupid rules like you can't go places without a mask 
where you can't go places without having a vaccine passport by vaccines that are a particular way. And and that's just one thing that, that we know that they've done and they've been stupid about. And, and the fact is their vaccines have increased, is my belief, the... Um, the all um, reasons all, mortality. Yeah, all and cause so, mortality. Yes, all cause mortality has gone up. Now, I don't like the fact that I can't go to the groceries and, and buy to the store and buy food in the future if my face doesn't fit because some bureaucrats decided that I don't follow the correct amount of rules. And so I understand if, if the thieving doubled under the Labour government and since COVID till now, I understand why it could be something to do. I just don't like it because I don't think that people should be in control of knowing who's gone where and why and how and did you come to the supermarket and where did you park and do all these other maybe, different things. Do you think maybe that this is a cunning ploy to get us to wear masks to the supermarket? So we get a mask with, you know, <laughs> a, um, a toothless grin on the face of it or, um, you know, something like wear, wear something zany so you can't be facially recognised and then they win in the long run because now we're all wearing masks at the supermarket. <laughs> well, it could be that. But I see um, China's very interested in getting all male DNA-Y um, chromosome mapped so that they can get a profile of everybody everywhere in what they do. And that's basically to help with authoritarianism, that they know what everyone's doing and what everyone's likely to do, then that's where that goes. And whilst it's only a supermarket facial recognition, these they build up databases on all sorts of people for all sorts of reasons, and suddenly we are not anything like as free as we were. Yeah. Uh, you're right, it is a slippery slope. And, um, you know, we've, we've seen cafes... Uh, in New Zealand, we're seeing other businesses, um, Fuller's Ferries, for example, they, uh, they're cashless now, and so you have to use a card um, for everything. Um, you know, I try and use cash as much as I can, and, I'm, and I know you do as well, but uh, there's a whole lot of people out there who are blithely just um, complying with this and uh, carrying on uh, thinking that there's no slippery slope, but um, what we've seen in the last four years is that the slippery slope is real, and it can be quite slippery at times. Absolutely. And when you see things like we're in a cashless society, but the truckers um, in Canada didn't do the right thing as through the government and got their bank accounts frozen. Different slippery slope then, isn't it? Because now you, you can't eat, you can't buy stuff, um, you can't sell stuff and put the money into your account. Um, I always just think, there's no reason for people to find too much about you because your own privacy and who you are doesn't help to be shared. And I'm, I'm a relatively private person anyway. I don't particularly like going on um, where people are recognising me on the TV or anything like that. I just don't do it. But in um, times gone by, I might have been more keen. But now I just have seen the government can't be trusted with the power they've got and it won't be long before if all the supermarkets do it, then many other places do it, then government will be doing things like um, getting a, a warrant to say we have access to your security now. And then I think we're in, in the wrong side of history. Mm. Well, it's something to watch out for. And I, I, I tend to agree with you. The slippery slope is real. And, uh, you know, how long will it take before um, they've got facial recognition at service stations? or in you know, booze shops or vape stores. It, it, it just keeps on going, and then we've got cameras everywhere, and we no longer have any privacy. Exactly. And they know where all your movements are, the sort of things you – so then they target advertising to, toward you, and not everybody has got a good budgeting and structure with their finances, so that when things are being targeted, they think, oh, it's a sign I should be buying that. Next thing you know, they're spending money on things that they shouldn't have because it's been targeted specifically for them because of the preferences of what they search. Mm. Yeah, it's terrible. And it and it will continue unless we actually say something. But uh, Lindley made a, a comment. She said um, she's a bit concerned about these cameras because at the local countdown in near her in the South Island, there's a little mouse that's been stealing um, salads. 
uh, it's been caught on camera and she's wondering, you know, how will we be able to tell which mouse has been stealing because they all kind of look the same. And I said, oh, you, you sound like you're profiling the mouse. She says, well, there might be rats because they're stealing. And those are the types of people who steal. It was quite hilarious, actually. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes. No, I um, I think that um, without it, I'm happy to shop. And um, uh, I'm thinking that we might just be doing um, grocery ordering online and get it delivered to us. And it's probably worse still because they really know you're buying habits then, but hey. That, well, that's, that's the thing. Um, you, 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 you haven't been, uh, you haven't challenged the till in the supermarket for quite some time, though, have you? I have not. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks for your call, Paul, and uh, we'll talk next week. Okay. Take care, Cam. Have a good day. Bye for oh, now. Well, thank you. Welcome to Cam's Buddies. Good afternoon, Cameron. How are you this week? Oh, uh, you know, usual box of birds, same as I am every week. Irrepressible. Boxing. Happy. Happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All, happy all... With the, this current political state of things. Oh, look, I'm always happy. It doesn't matter what's happening with politics. There's always something for me in it. <laughs> if you're losing, you're still winning, you reckon? I never lose. I never lose. That's the great thing about politics. You don't like the rules? Change the rules. Ignore the rules? <laughs> do whatever you want. It's fantastic. Anyway, this week, you may have seen... Yeah. Uh, Foodstuffs, which is New World and Pack and Slave and New World, are trialling a oh, on Foursquare are trialling facial recognition cameras, and also Woolworths, formerly Countdown, have launched their new card on the beginning of February. And part of the terms and conditions in there is uh, a right for them to track your vehicle, record your vehicle, mark it against your card, and in the future they may want to look at doing facial recognition. What's your thoughts on these things? Well, I've been thinking about this. I'm in two minds. I mean, five years ago, I would have been horrified against, you know, against it. But having been shopping in the last six months several times and seen uh, people stealing trolleys and literally nothing happening, and then when I've talked to the checkout ladies, I've said, why don't you guys call the cops? They said, they don't do anything. They don't even bother coming. Yeah, that's so this the problem, is just a it? reaction. It's a reaction from the lawlessness of the last six years. And private companies are doing something about it themselves. So I'm not, I'm what, not sure I'm we... happy about it, but um, I feel sorry for the supermarkets where they've got hordes of people that are going into these supermarkets, filling up their trolleys, and then walking out the door without a buy or leave, uh, t- taking all the stuff with them. Yeah, I've seen a guy walk out at my supermarket with a trolley full of meat and just ran away and not even chased. They, they followed me out the door and he just ran out and then ran across the car, across the road and chucked it all into a boot and then drove off. And apparently they sell it. There's, you know, there's points in South Auckland and West Auckland where they sell sell it. Well, we're, we're paying for so, that ultimately because the, the shops have a certain amount of what they call it. I don't lose, mate. That was my yeah. next point. Yeah, the, they, they call the it shrinkage. The inflation. Yeah, they call it shrinkage yeah. and uh, they just load the costs up and they'll know um, on a weekly basis what the shrinkage is. And uh, they'll uh, price accordingly, and 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 it's us, uh, law-abiding citizens, that are getting punished for it. Yeah, and that's exactly right. That's that's the point of it. It's adding to the inflation and adding to the food costs. It's it's just the so unless we see the police actually start to police our communities and have politicians that support policy around you know law enforcement, then we're just going to see more private companies move to protect their staff and their product, and that's. It's just another result of the six shit years we had. You know? Yeah, the the, cr- the crime friendly Ardun regime. Yeah, and that that's what it is. I mean, you can't blame the supermarkets. I'd do the same. I mean, I I don't like it. Don't get me wrong. I don't like any tracking or, but they're trying to protect them, their assets, and that's you know they never used to have to worry about it. Well, Paul but was can on you before. Someone could steal like a, yeah. So yeah, so Paul was on before, and he was saying this is this feels like the slippery slope again, that that they've got facial recognition here, and um, next thing they'll extend it somewhere else, and then we won't be able to use cash, and we'll be have to pay for things with our face, and a whole lot of stuff like that. He's not keen at, uh, about it at, at all, and neither was Lindley. 
Yeah, well, I'm not keen on it. Don't get me wrong, but I just understand why it's here. But it's it's. I understand it's, that totally, but it doesn't mean we have to be happy failure. About but it. what are we supposed to do? I mean, well, we can't stop them. There's no just I mean, don't shop there. Well, Countdown has got mask, cameras. Now you love wearing masks. Yeah, well, that's the thing. I said to Paul, <laughs> maybe it's a cunning plan, cunning ploy to um, get us to all wear masks at supermarkets. <laughs> yeah. It just, suddenly all the people who hate masks will start wearing masks and all that. Yeah. Anyway, it's a pretty crazy world, Ken. You know totally. That. So. <laughs> Lindley suggests that like- it's a, a long list of things, a breakdown in law and order, uh, a lack of uh, a stable home life, uh, no consequences, uh, a whole list of things uh, out there. I'm not sure we can fix this um, easily, and I don't think cameras are going to fix it either. The cameras won't fix it. They just make it harder for the thieves to operate because next time they walk back in the supermarket and the alarm will sound, it's thanks to some AI face detection. And then or they'll, they'll, stop or the they'll, wear, and, or they'll wear a mask and uh, and put things on their face to, to defeat the facial recognition and just keep on stealing. Yeah, but I, I guess they would draw great suspicion walking in a balaclava or whatever. <laughs> Yeah, it's 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 terrible. It's just another bad sign for our society. That it's like this, but you know, politicians don't seem to do much about it. Well, I don't know if they care. I well, I think some of them care, but there's not a lot that they can do about it without doing, pulling some really big levers. You know, like mm. enforcing education or enforcing families, or you know, um, or putting thieves in jail. Well, look, I'd be I'm a super fan of putting people in jail, mate. I just and people say the cost of jail is more expensive, but just make jails cheaper to run. Well, they're, they're not that expensive to run in places like India and China and the Philippines. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we should outsource our prisons they, to, to to private operators that that are used to um, you know serving <clears throat> up, serving up gruel and have a thin blanket um, and fifteen to a cell. Imagine how that would go down with the woke exporting our prisoners for their terms. <laughs> <laughs> It'd go down like a cup of cold sick. But yeah, we could just outsource prisons and just pay them a yearly fee, which would be a lot cheaper, and we wouldn't have NIMBYs complaining about a prison in their backyard either. So it'd fix that as well. Maybe we could have like a con air, right? You know, the flight's leaving Friday and it's going to be full of 200 criminals. I mean, if the British could do it, in sense, and- if the British could transport them back in the 1800s to Australia, why don't we, you know, bring that back? <laughs> Well, yeah, this is – you've certainly walked off the uh, topic there, Ken, but anyway, I, yeah, I, look, I don't, I don't know what to do about the facial recognition because I understand it, and I, I don't particularly keen on it, but I, I don't know how we stop them here, like, because we've got to stop the thievery. So unless we see some good criminal justice, I don't think we're going to see the rollback of security features either. No, and I agree with you. I don't think we are either. All right, Jimmy, thanks for your, your call this there. week. On. One last kick. Oh, yeah. One last kick. How come Costa's still there? He was overseer of all this crap. Yeah, I don't know why he's still there either. Maybe it's his pally text to Mark Mitchell, although I don't think Mark Mitchell would care too much about that. No. Anyway, I, thought, I, I honestly thought he would be one change that we'd see quite smartly, and, and that would see a big change in direction from the police. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, well, I need to look oh, well. up what his next term, how and when his term is up. It might be coming up close anyway. In which case, it's cheaper to leave him there and expire his term and see you later, Cyril. Yeah, true. Okay, thanks, Cam. All right, mate. Talk, talk to you next week. Yes. Welcome to Cam's buddies, Miles. Good afternoon. How are you, Cam? Um, box of birds as usual. You know, causing mischief, enjoying life. It's a wonderful warm weather in Auckland at the moment. Apparently it's global boiling, but I, I think we used to call it summer. Yeah, I'm pretty sure these are the summers I can remember from way back when. <laughs> exactly. When uh, when I was a little boy running around with my uh, Fiji feet in the Auckland summer, uh, you know, we had uh, brown hills and uh, you know, the, the fields were dusty and dry for weeks and weeks, if not months on end. It's good to be back to yeah, how and we it had, was 40 years ago. And we didn't have water restrictions, but that's a whole different topic. 
But what I want to talk to you about tonight is this development of uh, foodstuffs and Woolworths and Countdown and rolling out facial recognition in their supermarkets. Now, it's a trial to start with, but we all know what happens with these trials. They come to us, a you know, stunning success, and then they're rolled out everywhere, and all of a sudden uh, we're being monitored and facially recognised when we go to the supermarket and buy, you know, buy all sorts of things, and uh, we might not want other people to know that we're buying those things. Oh, look, facial recognition is a, is a can of worms. I really love facial recognition. I want it to be everywhere. After all, you know, guess what? What have you got to lose if you've got nothing to hide? And can you imagine what life would be like if you uh, had uh, facial recognition and you went up to the checkout counter and didn't have to use cash? Can you imagine? Ah, yeah, right. That's how it'll go. Not. Yeah, it's, uh, Paul, Paul said it's a slippery slope, and uh, I agree with him on that. If you if you let them wedge this in, uh, then next minute there'll be facial recognition at service stations, facial recognitions at, at booze shops, you know, and then it'd be very easy for them to then link your um, payment cards and say, well, I think you've bought enough wine this week. Um, we're not going to have any more wine in your trolley at the supermarket anymore. You're, you're a bit of a lush. Can you, can you imagine if they decided that they didn't want to serve you, well, guess what? The checkout wouldn't work, nothing would work, facial recognition would be um, used against you. If they suddenly decided for one reason or another, oh, this chap didn't have a vaccination, we can't have him in the supermarket, oh, this chap, he's, he thinks and votes conservative, we can't have him. And what about all those pesky Christians? We can't have them in the supermarket. That's the thin end of the wedge, I believe. Yep, the thin end of the wedge is true. And the trouble with the thin end of the wedge is that uh, what usually follows is the thick end of the wedge. (laughs) Exactly. And that's why I'm such a big fan of facial recognition. Can you just imagine how it will make society so much better to live in? It'll stop crime It'll, it'll make our lives it so beautiful. Of course it will. Yes, we really believe that. Yeah, just like, um, you know, if we reform the electricity industry, we'll get cheaper power. Still waiting. Well, what about how if we amalgamate all the councils in Auckland, we'll get cheaper rates and we won't actually have a behemoth spending millions on Miola Road at $750,000 per level crossing? Twenty-eight of them. Point Chev must be a very 20. must be a very dangerous suburb. Point Chev to require twenty-eight raised platform um, uh, pedestrian crossings. I mean, you know, I, I th- have they got like a whole bunch of hoons out there, or is it is it more you know hippies like uh, clearly, Russell Brown or Simon Wilson on their electric bikes that are running people over? Clearly, they don't have facial recognition. <laughs> They, they, I think Point Chef should have facial recognition. Everyone driving along Miola Road with their 28 bumps should be facially recognised. Anyone that grimaces, that's it. They can't drive Miola Road anymore. Well, what about if they decide that we shouldn't really be driving at all and all vehicles need to have uh, facial recognition and you've used the car three times this week, you've driven 500 kilometres, that's far too far, um, you know, we've got 15-minute cities and you're 20 minutes out of your where your house is, so the car stops working. I, I just can't wait for that. Can you imagine how harmonious and beautiful the city would be if everyone was pinned up in their own in their own three-block area? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's just ridiculous. But that's the thing, right? It, it is a slippery slope because if it works here, then other uh, companies will do it. And, and whilst foodstuffs and and Woolworths have got the you know the financial wherewithal to do this. Eventually, technology gets to uh, you know become ubiquitous, and then it infiltrates down. You know, can you imagine it? Um, facial recognition at the local dairy. Uh, no cigarettes for you. Oh, right, you've had too many. You've had too many I, packets of chips this week. Yeah, and I tell you something: facial recognition at the ATM machine. Why are you depositing that cash? Why are you withdrawing cash? You know, I mean, from my perspective, technology, as you said, always gets cheaper. 
And once you get to a certain tipping point, then everyone can afford it. You just need to look at home security systems now with all the uh, cameras on the internet. That is ridiculously cheap compared with even 15 years ago. So facial 15 recognition, years ago, you yep. needed to mortgage your um, house and uh, sell the left arm of your firstborn to afford a, a CCTV system in your house. Um, you know, you're yep. right. Now you can get it uh, delivered via Amazon in about a week um, for three-fifths or five-eighths of stuff all. Yep, and the, the, the best thing of all about facial recognition is, guess what, you know, we'll be able to identify those pesky folks who insist upon, you know, having law and order, who insist upon a, a, a decent standards in society. We could isolate all of them and, and, you know, we could stop them buying food at the supermarket. We could stop them buying petrol or oh, they'd quickly reform. They'd all, you'd all have to think the same. Oh, I guess that's called the social credit score, is it? Oh, I wonder where that's been used before. Mm, exactly. I noticed that um, some Maori groups have come out against it, and I'm just wondering if it's because they're worried the barcodes on some people's chins are going to um, set off the system. <laughs> I'll yeah, probably get I'm, in trouble for that I'm comment. Not sure that'd, I'm not sure that would be the work, but you could just imagine that people got um, QR codes tattooed on them and the facial recognition system went bananas over the QR code that they read. I mean, there's always a way around these things. And right. what, are people going to stuff, um, or, or, or perhaps people will perennially wear masks because, you know, COVID is, is so dangerous, you just have to wear a mask. Yeah, we're and on facial the recognition isn't. We're on the 27th wave and we need to have you wearing masks at the supermarket, but everyone doesn't want to do that anymore. So what we'll do is we'll bring in facial recognition and we'll make you wear them. The 27th wave, it sounds like you're a bit of a surfer there, Cam. Well, you know what they say about every seventh wave's the big one. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Is, is this facial recognition the seventh wave? Oh, I just can't believe the short-sightedness. Mind you, I've got a bone to pick with um, Woolworths. Those people are the people that instigated the plastic ban, plastic bag ban, and I am a one-man crusade for bringing back plastic shopping bags because, actually, I want to save the orangutans. I don't like the idea of rainforests being chopped down to make useless paper bags. I, I like multi-use shopping bags. Bring them back, I say. Well, you know, I, I worked for Food Town when I was a nipper, and uh, I can remember the big fuss about paper bags. We, oh, we've got to get rid of paper bags. The orangutans are dying. Um, you know, it, regardless of whether we used um, wood that came from rainforests, in New Zealand we don't. Uh, so all of our paper bags came from Kinleith. And, uh, and so we had this big push to get rid of paper bags, and they brought out plastic bags. And, of course, now we've got to save the turtles, and uh, and we've got to save, you know, um, God knows what else from these plastic bags. And so, do you think to say orangutans aren't trendy anymore? I don't think so. I think the problem is, is they, um, you know, a bit hairy, and um, they don't look really that lovable. And so, you know, it's pretty. It's like trying to love a rat. Um, not but the really most mental. important thing is, would the facial recognition be able to tell the difference between me and an orangutan? I, I, I'd have to check up and, and get back to you on that. Maybe my wife would have something to say as well. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, we've gone from um, Cam's buddies tonight. We've gone from facial recognition of mice and rats to facial recognition of orangutans. So a broad spectrum of speciesism. <laughs> We, we cater to all tastes. <laughs> exactly. All right, Miles, thanks very much for your call, and we'll speak next week on Cam's Buddies. Thank you, Cam. See you later. See you, bye. My buddies are awesome. Once again, we've got common sense from them all. I'm so blessed to have such a great bunch of mates and new buddies to share anything with, and they're so wise and, as I said before, speak common sense to these issues. Tell us who you think made the best comment this week of Cam's Buddies and why by emailing inbox at realitycheck.radio or text to 2057. Thanks for tuning in to RCR, Reality Check Radio. 
Do you like what you're listening to or dislike what you're listening to? Either way, we want to hear from you. Get in touch with us now. You can text us with your message to 2057. That's 2057. Or email us at inbox at realitycheck.radio. We'd love to hear from you. So connect with us today.